Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the broadcast. This is the Global Reality. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2019. Glad to be back in the saddle and back here with you for another show. It's taken me this long to get back on air after coming up $500 short the first of the month. And uh, we got uh, got some help this week. So I'm back. And I thank you very much, everybody out there, for your continued support and for everybody who has contributed and uh, helped out and allowed us to get back on air here and back to business thank you so much i got so much shit to talk about man i can't even remember everything that i wanted to talk about and i've got so much i'll probably won't even get into all of it here tonight so i'll do my best got a lot to oh, so much so much discuss i don't even know how i'll even remember to get into all of it but i'm gonna do my best that's all you can do right hope everybody out there is doing well again good to be back with you and good to be back and uh in in here to get into lots of stuff i got so much to talk about um now that i'm back and able to broadcast and be online and all that stuff i have uh gotten back to work on the spellcasters volume two again volume two and volume three are going to be released right on top of each other I'm hoping to have volume two finished before the end of this month. It's looking like we're uh, on track to do that. And uh, then I'll jump right back on it and uh, get volume three finished. It'll probably take me about three or four weeks after that to do that. So just wanted to update the progress now that I'm back to work and let you know. I uh, Man, I got to tell you. It's, you know, volume one of Spellcaster, it took longer than I expected, a year longer than I expected to. This one, of course, is taking way longer than I expected it to. But with, with the way that, uh, you know, the way that new information comes to light and the way, you know, you get new understandings, new perspectives on stuff, I've had to do so many rewrites and, and, and do so much backtracking on this project and you know at (laughs) the thing of it is at the end of the day it's uh it's still not going to come out how i envisioned it to be and i've just had finally resigned myself to that fact this week so um it's it's not to say it's not going to be you know these aren't going to be great films the information itself is the most important thing but for a long time, I've had this thing in my head of how I perceive these films should be. And it's become increasingly more difficult to be able to translate that into the film. It's like, you know, you have an idea or something in your head. And you go to sketch it out on a piece of paper and you sketch it out on a piece of paper. You're like, fuck, that's not it. That's not what I, you know, that's not what's in my head. That's kind of, that's kind of been how it is. So I've just kind of had just, just resigned myself to saying, look, you know, it's not there. It's not happening. How you're, how you're perceiving to be in your head is not what's coming out. Again, that's not to say what's coming out is bad. I mean, it's, it's great. It's again, it's a step. Each progressive film I made that I've made has been a step up from the last one. And uh, this one's no different, but um, it just, I don't know. It's just not what I, it's not in my head, what I had envisioned in my head, but that's okay. You know, I had to uh, admit that that's okay. You know, again, it's not that it's, I mean, it's not like it's going to be bad. It's, it's perfectly fine for any, anybody but me, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to put out crap and I'm not going to rush shit out. I've done that before in the past. and It was a huge mistake. I regret it. My first three films were all rushed out and it shows. So that's, you know, that's been the other thing I've had to learn every, you know, every time I make a film, I learn more and I'm just now kind of feeling like I'm at, you know, peak capacity. Again, the only thing that's been holding me back has just been doing all this shit on, old ass gear and having to deal with all the 
stuff that that entails that's been most difficult and and you know trying to do this on you know little to no budget so but i'm finally at that point now where i'm just you know i'm just letting it go i'm just gonna dump all the information out the best way i can that's the hardest thing is being able to make it all um be digestible for for people you know because i've got all this information and it all connects together and it's all fucking damning it's all fucking but it really, I mean, I'm no wizard, man. You know, it, there's no secret recipe or secret formula to putting something together in a way where people are going to be able to digest it and understand it. There's no formula to it. So I just tried to do my best and hopefully, you know, people will get it and make the connections and they'll see it and they'll get it and understand it. And that's, you know, that'll be it. But uh, yeah, other than that, I, I am re- I'm still really excited for uh, the approaching finish line of these films after we've had so many setbacks and delays and and everything else and those setbacks and delays are now finally uh, coming to an end and we're getting forward. Um, the only thing, other thing is, is that when we now that we got some help this week, we were able to get back to broadcasting. We're pretty much back at zero again. So our goal for this week is to raise two hundred dollars by tomorrow. So please hit up our uh, contribution banner. You'll see that there in the comments of the YouTube video and in the uh, read more section, you can also find it at the global reality Facebook page or the Josh Reese filmmaker talk show host Explorer page. Those banners are there. You can also hit the donate button at my website, theglobalreality.com. You can use the credit card, debit card there. You don't have to have a PayPal account you Processes it through PayPal, but you won't have to have an account for that. So you do that there as well as uh, <clears throat> check out our, uh, the download shop, the download store where you can find all of my documentary films, all the audio books, that's an essential part. Your contributions are the most essential part. But the other second essential part is that is people uh, purchasing the downloads of the films and the audio books and all that stuff. The newest stuff in there, if you haven't checked it out in a while, is my five-part series, the Mystery Hollywood series, which is absolute must-see. If anything that I've ever done is a must-see, that five-part series definitely is. So don't sleep on that. Be sure and pick that up. The new, other newest uh, thing in there this year, 2009, is the 10-year anniversary of my second film, The Secret Right, Volume 1, the first ever film made on the secretive right-wing group, the Council for National Policy. It's a new, new cut, new version. There were some things I was able to go back and fix. And this one, plus some additional stuff, the Secret Right 1.5, which was an additional thing I put out later. That's been recut into the film. So there's 25 minutes of additional footage in with the uh, original film. And it's uh, been remastered in 4K. Of course, it has to be downgraded, you know, to a lower file to put it up online, all this stuff. But the original master files were cut and re-edited in in 4K. And then, uh, you know, we encoded a file for uh, the download shop after that from that. So it's the first time I've done... uh, any of my old films um, remastered in 4K. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Go and get a download of that. Make a contribution however you can. And also, if you don't have a membership to our a uh, membership to our members archives, that's the best way. You know, with what YouTube's doing now, you know, it doesn't matter how many uh, subscribers we have. Because of the content of my show, they're not putting it in just like they said they wouldn't. Now, it does, you know, even if you're subscribed. You don't get notifications of my show. It doesn't come up in subscriptions. I think you might get the, if you you click the little bell icon thing, I think you might get a notification, but it doesn't show up like in your suggested feed and all that stuff. Not at all. So that's really, that's hurt our reach. Sometimes people aren't getting shows for two or three days after they come out. Oh, I wish I would have heard the show. I didn't see it until two or three days days later. I didn't get a notification. It didn't pop up on my feed. And the way around that is to get a membership to the members archives, which you can do. And you can find the link to that here and uh, all the other aforementioned places. You can also find it at my website, theglobalreality.com. If you hit the subscribe button on the right hand side of the page, it'll take you to the Podbean page. And it has all the membership options in there where you can uh, get your membership. That's when the show is done. Within uh, two minutes of it being done, it's uploaded directly to there. So 
if you get a membership, you're getting the shows within minutes of when they're finished and uploaded. And uh, sometimes when I put them on YouTube, it can take, uh, you know, seven or eight hours sometimes because you got to make a, you know, a separate video and encode that. Wait for that to finish and code. Then you got to upload it to YouTube. Wait for that to finish and encode. You know, it's a process. But if you get the subscription, then you ensure that you're going to get this show. Uh, you know, I mean, what happens, you know, people don't think about that sometimes. You know, that's why I've never put all my eggs in the basket of YouTube, which is exactly why I don't have as many followers and subscribers as people who haven't had accounts and been doing this for nearly as long as I have. You know, and, and not to mention all the fucking suppression they've done of my channel continue to do with my channel i see it all the time i see it every day it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous i and i've talked about that before you know i don't care about numbers and i don't care about i've never cared about that but it's interesting when you go and look at it like like i would be just as distrustful if all of a sudden you know i had millions of followers i would be i would be just as suspicious of that as i am of the low numbers that i get because I, I, like, like I said, I don't ever, I've never cared about that kind of thing. But the other night, just out of curiosity, I was looking on my YouTube channel. These numbers just, just seem ridiculous. It just doesn't add up. You know, I'll see them go up for a period of time, and then all of a sudden they dip for no apparent reason. I mean, you can tell the manipulation is going on. I mean, we already know what they're doing to the suppression of my videos. You know, I talked, I talked many times, people, oh, you should label your shows, you get more views. Yeah, I would, but then it makes it easier. You're an easier target that way. That's how they target you. And I proved that point when I put up that show and I put in parentheses, Rogan versus Jones coverage. And immediately that video, none of my other videos got flagged. None of my other videos had gotten flagged, but the first one I put up where I indicated what was in there, it gets flagged. But listen to this, listen to these numbers. I mean, I'm not an expert in this kind of shit, but this just looking at these numbers, it just seems very odd. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute. Last 28 days on my YouTube channel, 1,214,494 minutes watched for a grand total of 111,456 views with 247 new subscribers. 16,176 subscribers, 6.52 million, 6,526,395 lifetime views. Does that, something doesn't just sound right. To, see, what it is, is that you got a lot of pussies out there. That's the problem. And I don't mean vaginas. I mean, uh, weak, spineless people who want your information oh they want your information but they um you know they just don't want anybody to know about it so that's the thing see what i'm saying that's why there's such a disconnect with i mean these numbers don't make any sense One million two hundred fourteen thousand four hundred ninety four minutes in the last 28 days on my channel 104 grand total of 111,456 views 247 new subscribers for a grand total of 6.5 million lifetime views on my channel, but only 16,176 su subscribers. It makes zero sense. Unless you start thinking about it in terms of you've got people out there. I Listen, you know, I hate to have to call a spade a spade, but this is just a fact that you've got a lot of people out there who want this information. They're in this information. But they don't want to be uh, seen to be into it. And hey, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody, but I can have an opinion on it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to judge you if you're one of those people. Hey, do your do what you want. Live your life, man. I'm not going to do what you want to do. But I can still have an opinion on it while still you know, saying, hey, do whatever you want, live your life. But I can still have an opinion on it. My opinion on it is it fucking sucks. And, you know, a lot of people, this is, you know, the life, uh, I'm just going to have to come right out and say it. Here's the bottom line. There are a lot of people out there that are into this type of stuff 
but they don't want wifey finding out. That's what it is, and that's why they don't. That's why they don't contribute. They want to contribute. They want to support my work. They want to subscribe to the channel, but wifey is a ball buster because instead of I, you know, again, who am I to judge? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not trying to judge anybody. But you know, a lot of people fall into that that programmed and have fallen into that program. And if you've come out of that and more power to you, I'm glad to have you. But you know, a lot of people fall into that programmed life thing of, you know, go to school, go to college, get a job, find a wife, go to work, die, rinse, repeat the end. That's your life. You do that. That's what everybody else does. That's normal. Do that. i never wanted that. Even as a kid, I never wanted that. So that's on me. But listen, be a man. Tell your wife. If you can't tell your wife or your husband or whoever, you know, I'm sure there's probably women there in this situation too. I'm not saying it's exclusively just with men and women, but let's be honest. Men are a lot more likely and are a lot more often the case because I've seen this a lot with a lot of guys to be into this kind of stuff but not want their wife to know about it and have to keep it on the DL. And hey, man, you know, again, I'm not judging you, more power to you. But again, I can still have an opinion on it, and I can still have an opinion that is that I don't like that shit. And I think it's bullshit, and I think it's hypocritical, and I think it's, you know, fuck them, man. You only live once. If your significant other can't accept the fact that you're trying to become more informed about subjects and topics that maybe aren't, considered the most mainstream and taboo, maybe you'd be considered bad, whatever have you, then, you know, maybe that's not the right person for you. But again, people don't want to face that fact either. That's a whole other can of worms, isn't it? Uh, you know, maybe the fact that you, you didn't realize till you're like five years into your fucking marriage that you married the wrong person. Ooh, it happens, man. It happens. Boyfriend and girlfriend shit. I've been in those situations plenty of times. Don't even, don't even think I have. And I have plenty of times more than, more than once, twice, three or four times, a lot of times. Where you're just like, oh, shit. You're one of those people? Fuck. You know, we just moved in together. Shit. Why didn't I find this out earlier? That happens. But it's better that it happens then than it happens when you put a ring on it, you know. Uh... Who was it that I heard say something one time? I think it might have been Bill Burr or somebody was like, you know. I can't remember exactly. I'm paraphrasing. But it was basically something of sleeping on a futon in your 30s is better than sleeping in a king bed next to a wife. You realize that you shouldn't have married and you'll be laying there dreaming about sleeping on that futon again. Because there's no risk in chasing a dream, but there's an incredible amount of risk in playing it safe. And that really resonated with me. Like, that's the fucking truth, man. You know? Go after it. Go after what you're looking for. If what you're looking for is knowledge or if it's go after it and be unabashed about it. Don't hide it. Maybe you can ter- you can turn your significant other on to that stuff. But, man, I've been seeing this go on for so long, and I've been getting emails from people about this stuff for some years. I mean, I'm pretty much the entire time I've been doing this on air. You know, I've been researching for 25, almost 30 years, but I've been on air for the past. This is my 12th year on air. Well, there's a lot of people out there like that, man, you know. And, uh, I just, it's just sad that you, that for whatever reason, you're in a situation in a relationship with a person and because of that, you're, you're not allowed to be yourself. That's prison, dude. That's, that's the definition of prison. Not all prisons have bars. There are people walking around on this earth 
every minute of every day frees a bird that are in a prison they can't break out of. And generally it's because they built the walls around themselves. But it's, it, you know, I, I, I can tell you, man, it's only going to blow up and come out later. You can suppress it all you want, but, you know, if you can't be yourself with a person that you're with, it's just going to manifest and be in, in your subconscious. And it eventually, you know, it's just going to come out in anger and come out in whatever kind of other manifestations, you know, you're just, you're, you're not going to be happy with yourself. Believe me, man, I've went down those roads. I'm glad I went down those roads a lot when I was a lot younger. But sure, I, you know, when I was in my 20s, you know, I'm 42 now. When I was in my 20s, I did that shit a few times where, I, you know, I thought I was going to change myself. Oh, I'll change myself for, for this person or whatever to be in this relationship. That's eh, fucking bullshit, dude. It goes nowhere. Nowhere good. It only goes somewhere bad because eventually you just get resentment for that person and you know you 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 have to it's you know it's true you just really but people often in order to be able to get in whatever situation they want to get in they put on this fake facade they become this fake person and before you know it the fake person they created to be able to get where they wanted <clears throat> all of a sudden it shoehorns them into being not themselves. And you know what comes after that? A lot, you know, alcoholism, drug abuse. Failed relationships. That's why, I mean, you listen, you just got to be yourself in all situations. And let's, look, it's tough. You know, it's not all peaches and roses on that end either, because... Then when you're just 100% yourself all the time, it's very easy for someone to automatically make assumptions about you that aren't true. It's very easy for people to, uh, you know, cast judgment on that too. But I've, I've just seen this a lot. You know, I've seen a lot of people doing this and I think it's, uh, you know, I think people need to address it. If you're into the, I mean, you, you should, I, I just don't see Especially if someone has chosen, to, you know, to be married to you. I just don't see how someone could, you know, not want to be themselves and just be like, look, I'm into this stuff. I listen to this stuff. You know, if you got a problem with it, then we need to figure it out because I'm going to keep listening to this stuff. I'm going to keep trying to inform myself on, on this stuff. And in the end, being more informed about this stuff is going to be better for our future and, you know, better for our kids if we have them or whatever. So, look, I, I, I just, I really think that, Yeah, it sucks, man, because that's the big, you know, that, again, that's that's one of the big things holding back all everything. People are afraid to be themselves because they're afraid of being shunned by their family, their friends, coworkers, whoever. And, uh, and it's sad because if you can't free yourself from that, you're not going to be able to free your mind to the point it needs to be at to be able to level yourself up in being able to understand a lot of this deeper information, not only understand it, but also to put it in action and, and have the knowledge work for you. Anyway, that's it. I, I'm, I'm done raining on that. I just, uh, I just been doing this for too long and there's, you know, you, after a long, the same, you know, you let shit go for a long time. You don't discover then finally you just, I just look at those numbers like it just doesn't add up, man. People are afraid to see that, uh, you know, they might be subscribed to my channel or that's uh, just hilarious. Anyway. But yeah, I'm rocking and rolling on the uh, Swellcaster 2. Oh, I was going to tell you, this is interesting. You're never going to guess who bought a, a download of the Spellcasters Volume 1 last week. 
because I'm actually a fan of this guy and his band. Uh, and when I saw the purchase come in, I was like, where do I know that from? It was like uh, the committee to keep music evil. And I was like, I know that from somewhere. And yeah, it turns out it's the record label that was started by the guy from the, uh, the band, the Brian Jonestown massacre, Anton Newcomb. Anton Newcomb bought a fucking copy of, uh, the Spellcasters, and that's, and that's some shit. And I, I know for a fact it was him because it came in from the record label. And, uh, if you go and look, if you go and look on his, uh, Twitter page or you type like, um, Anton Newcomb Scientology, you'll find all kinds of stuff posts he's made against Scientology. And I, I found an interview where he discussed his interest in the, uh, in, in the creation of Scientology and all that stuff. So big shout out to Anton Newcomb. Hey man, I'm a fan. You should get in contact with me. Shoot me an email, global reality show at gmail.com. Let me know what you thought about the film. Maybe we could do an interview or something. Send me a copy of that new album you just put out on silver vinyl. I'd love to have that. I'll trade you some downloads or some shit. Let's do this. Uh, if you've never seen the movie dig, it came out. It was about, uh, Dandy Warhols and his band, uh, the Brian Jones Town Massacre, he was a, you know, terrible. I'm surprised the guy's still alive, to be honest with you. He was a terrible uh, heroin addict for a long time, but he's totally clean and sober now. Uh, lives with his wife and kids, and I think he has one kid, wife and kid in Berlin, Germany. And uh, they're still putting out records, and, and uh, he's doing good, and apparently he's uh, watched Spellcasters, so. That's interesting. I've never really had anybody of note to say, you know. Although I suspect there's a lot more people, probably even more well known than him, that have been into my stuff, but they're they're never going to say it. They're never going to drop my name because I've said this time and time again. It, it as soon as my stuff ever gets a chance to reach a larger audience, it's over, and they know this, and that's why, you know, they're going to continue to try and keep me suppressed. They're going to try and and. Uh, Pull shit like they did with me on that Channel 5 UK TV interview thing that ended up on that conspiracy show that's still on Netflix, by the way. Hey, Netflix. Throwing all that billions of dollars around on that, all that stuff. Hey, I wanted to give me a show. Give me a series. Guarantee you I'll deliver you something better than anything else conspiracy related on Netflix that's ever been on there or is on there currently. Give me like a six episode series or something. Let me make a series. Some shit. Fuck. Get some real shit on there for God's sakes. You could Netflix could be, if, if Netflix gave me a, a series on there, they could put themselves so far ahead of the competition because, you know, they would have something on there that none of the competitors would have the nutsack to, to ever put out. So yeah. Hey, Netflix, holler at me. Let's do this. Me some of that Netflix money. Y'all are fucking billions in fucking debt. And what they like, what did I hear the other day? They're like six billion in fucking debt. Jesus Christ. Is that why they just fucking put that shit up to two dollars more? A month, but hey. They're they're still, you know. I I think that uh this Disney 20th Century Fox acquisition, the merger thing, and officially going through. And now Disney about to launch their own. Doesn't that mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but from my estimation, that now means that when Disney launches their streaming service, because they've already said they're open, the, the whole Disney vault thing, you know, that they've done for years where they put movies out for a period of time, where they go back in the vault, and then you've got to get them while they're out, or that's it, you know. Which kind of really already went away with the internet downloads and torrents and all that. But they're doing Disney's now doing away with that. Every single thing they have in their catalog that's Disney is getting put on their streaming service. And I think that also means since they now own 20th Century Fox, think about how many films 20th Century Fox has put. How many movies have you watched in your lifetime? They have dun, 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 dun. Jesus. I think that also means that probably everything that's on 20th Century Fox is going to be on their streaming service. I you know I, I don't know, man. Disney has been making the play to be, I mean, I don't know how they haven't gotten fucking antitrust suits and, and, uh, you know, uh, 
monopolization and all that stuff, but they're pretty much trying to be. And it's funny because to me, it's all it's all jockeying for control of a fucking ship that's going down anyway. I mean, uh, fucking TV and regular TV formats and shit is dead as fucking disco. You, you know, internet and streaming content and stuff, and it's, uh, that's where a lot of the numbers are going now. I mean, you've got, you have YouTube videos that get more views than a lot of shows on TV. And I don't just mean a few, I mean most of the shows on TV. Like, uh, especially late night TV too. Uh, I mean, who watches fucking late night TV anymore? Trump getting all butthurt about fucking Saturday night live, making fun of him, you know, trying to shut him down. That's just ridiculous. I mean, come on. I don't like Saturday night live either. It hasn't been funny in 25 years. I don't watch that shit, but if you believe in any little bit of the constitution, you should know that they have the every bit of a right to do that and to make fun of him. He's trying, this guy is trying to be a fucking absolute dictator. Constitution be damned. I mean, at least, but I mean, you wouldn't have seen George Bush do that. George Bush wouldn't have fucking, I mean, they made fun of him relentlessly, relentlessly. They made fun of George Bush, junior and senior, but specifically W. And he didn't try to, like, you know, get fucking investigations into Saturday Night Live. Well, get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Come on. But, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> but, I mean, Saturday Night Live or late night shows, you know, like, uh, I don't even know who's on those shows anymore. Jimmy Fallon? Ugh. Never liked Jimmy Fallon. Never thought he was funny. Who else? I don't even know who else is on anymore. Who's on Who's on CBS? Colbert? Ugh. Never like that fucking guy either. Ugh. Uh, who else? Conan O'Brien? Well, Conan O'Brien's on TBS, so that doesn't even matter anyway. I used to like Conan O'Brien. He was great back in the 90s. I mean... Back in the nineties, I remember, you know, that was you don't talk about must see TV, dude. Like you watched Letterman and Conan five nights a week. Because back in the nineties, they had they both had fucking phenomenal music guests five nights a week. Conan would always have, you know, great bands and up and coming bands and maybe bands that hadn't quite broke through yet, but had just put out their first album. So many great performances. Back then, but you know who uh, you know who runs. I mean, you remember when the whole thing happened with him and Leno, and he took over the Tonight Show for a while, and then supposedly the numbers were terrible, and they fired him. It was interesting how quickly he. Most people in that situation, everybody else. I mean, we remember when wasn't it? Who was it? Uh, Johnny Carson fired uh, Joan Rivers. Remember that? And she got banned for life or something from there. I mean, that, that hurt her career tremendously because back then Johnny was the real tastemaker. If you went on the Tonight Show back then, dude, you were if you weren't already a star, the very next day when you got up, you were going to be a star. After, just from going on that show, just from getting the stamp of approval from the Tonight Show, that's how it was. That was those days were over. And it was interesting that Conan just immediately had another show, no problem. Well, you know why that is, right? This really bummed me out when I found this out. It's absolutely true. You can look it up. He's back even, this was even back when he was still on NBC doing the Conan show back then, but for, I don't know, 20-something years, his whole entire operation, production company, his whole show, everything, has been run by the son of Henry Kissinger. That, that's no bullshit. That's not a lie. Conan O'Brien is a fucking Kissinger stooge. 100%. Anybody else in this situation when he getting fired from the Tonight Show like that were bad numbers would not have had a career left. The only reason that guy has stuck around and been able to continue and have a show is because he's had big dog Kissinger running his fucking whole show for 20-something years. 
That's, that's fact. You can look it up. I don't know how many people know that. I didn't know that for a long time. When I found it out, I was like, well, there you go. That, that explains that. If Conan was all right. I remember when he was on Saturday Night Live uh, back in the day. Even Bob Odenkirk were like, like, a lot of people don't know that. Like uh, Bob Odenkirk, you know, Better Call Saul and all that. He was from Mr. Show, Bob and David. Uh, back in the early 90s, a lot of, in mid-90s, a lot of those classic sketches from Saturday Night Live, the Chris Farley days and the Adam Sandler days and stuff, a lot of those were being written by guys like uh, Conan O'Brien and uh, Bob Odenkirk. In fact, Bob Odenkirk wrote, a lot of people don't know this, Bob Odenkirk actually wrote the Living in a Man Down by the River, the, the Chris Farley sketch, you know, and all that. That was a total creation of... Uh, of Bob Odenkirk, 100%. But, you know, the whole media now, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's, a dying, it's a dying format. But I think that, uh, I don't know, man, I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Disney decimates Netflix when their new streaming service comes out. Because, you know, all the original shows in the world, I don't think can, that, that, you know, they put billions of dollars in creating at Netflix. I really doubt any of that is going to be able to compete with the complete collection of everything Disney has ever put out and everything 20th Century Fox has ever put out. I mean, whew. that's, I mean, you, you virtually could say that just under the, 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 not to say there hasn't been other great films, great movies, great stuff put out outside of, of 20th Century Fox, you know, and, but when you look at, like, think about how many movies have that intro, and that tells you how many great movies you've watched, and, you know, it's just unbelievable. It's staggering to even think about. I just don't see how they're going to continue, but I mean, look, there's they, none of these guys, I, I feel like I could make like a five or six or seven or eight, ten, twelve part series for one of these, but, uh, you know, I don't know how to go about trying to make that happen at all. But I think it's necessary. And I think it's needed because the audience for this stuff is there. But now that the media is changing and is consolidating down and it's changing from broadcast TV over to internet based and streaming TV and whatnot, it's allowing the gatekeepers to have an even more uh, clamp down control mechanism on this stuff. You know, you think that they, the gatekeeping, and it was hard already, you know, to get anything out on TV. Now, with all this, new, this gives them a whole new gate to keep. This gives them a whole new level of stuff. And also creates, you know, these false perceptions in people's heads where, just like I, you know, I just told you these numbers that I'm looking at, it just doesn't make sense. But now that's become currency. And it's become like a resume or a job application now. And if it's very, very simple for them to keep numbers down for people that they definitely do not want the larger public to know about, like me, and then to pump up and inflate largely, overinflate numbers for other people out there because those people are lining up and putting out and, and not messing with the agenda and, and basically towing the line exactly how they want it to be. So even though the formats have changed and we've gone from streaming now over, you know, or actually from broadcast and, and regular network television, all that now over the internet, it, you know, the game changes, but the people running it stay the same. That's really the thing at the end of the day. So that's why I'm glad I'm able to create my films the way I want to create them and put them out myself and sell them directly to you myself without a middleman. You know, it's tough. We almost, we don't, we barely make it month to month here, but I would rather barely make it month to month than have to sit up here and try to sell you shit every fucking show. I'm not going to get up here and sell you fucking all these, you know, everybody's doing all this stuff, uh, you know, now like these, whatever supplements and, I just can't do that. I'm not going to be a fucking supplement salesman. I draw the line there. There's just no fucking way. Or whatever else. 
people sell now on these sponsored things, fucking, you know, shaving cream and razors and fuck out of here with that shit. But again, that's why it's imperative that we, we have everybody contribute and, uh, and contribute to our fundraisers and everything and buy our films because, you know, we don't have that outside funding. And, you know, again, if YouTube goes away tomorrow, that's why, again, why I've never put all my eggs in that basket. You know, what, what a lot of people are going to be unable to put anything out anymore. So as I was saying earlier, that's why the best, uh, my best advice to use to get a membership to our member archives so that in the event, you know, they crack down more and won't allow any kind of conspiracy or truth stuff on YouTube or YouTube goes away, you will, my show will continue. And uh, no matter what happens with all these streaming clamp downs and all this stuff, I'm going to keep broadcasting. I'm going to keep doing my thing. And uh, that's why I've, again, you know, much to the detriment of my channel, all that I've never put all my eggs in YouTube. I didn't even start putting stuff on there until a few years ago regularly. So um, it's just getting crazier and crazier. It really is. So much to talk about. Um, but yeah, again, shout out to Anton Newcomb from the. Uh, Brian Jonestown Massacre. Pretty cool to uh, see that he bought that. I, over the weekend, oh, oh, God, I watched, uh, well, tell me I am, I'm not just a fucking glutton for punishment. I watched the R. Kelly documentary series and the Leaving Neverland Michael Jackson series. I watched them back to back. Ugh. I need to vomit and have a shower after that, I gotta tell you. Ugh. Filth. Filth. You know the big takeaway though from watching those, a few big takeaways. Um with R. Kelly one, the biggest couple of biggest takeaways from that for me were a lot of these people are absolutely telling the truth. Some of these people are, are absolutely lying out of their fucking ass. But nobody really gives a fuck because there's already enough there of what they know that he did do. But none of this stuff, you know, the big thing for me is that why now? Why is this all coming out now? People have known about Michael Jackson and have known for years he was into little boys and now people are acting like it's fucking breaking news. Yet when he died, if you brought that up, I remember. Because I remember talking about this on my show 10 years ago. Literally 10 years ago, 2009, when he died. I remember talking about it on my show. All of a sudden, everybody in the media and everybody was all of a sudden okay, completely forgot about all of the fucking molestation shit. And, oh, he was so great. Like, wait a minute. We know this guy was a child molester. And then people would chastise you if you brought that up. Oh, how dare you? How dare you say that? He was a great artist. So now we're 10 years removed from that, and now it's not, he wasn't a great artist at all. I mean, I just don't get that. You could still think Michael Jackson did great music and still be sick and fucking pissed and think it's disgusting what the fuck he did to these children. You can, that, those two can exist simultaneously. Uh, you know, you can fucking think somebody's a piece of shit and still, I, I, I just, I don't know. The, the, all this stuff is definitely happening for a reason. And I think that reason 100% without question unequivocally is that so much of the attention now, not just in conspiracy research circles or any of that or truth or circles, conspiracy stuff. Or just, you know, in online little corners. Now there's been such a, a wider focus and just a, just an awareness of these elite pedophile rings that they've now had to, 
you know, burn some of their lower level lackeys to turn the attention away from people focusing on the much bigger names who've been involved in all this stuff for years. And if you watch my 2011 film, The Secret Right Volume 2, that's where I first started discussing all the connections to, you know, to Alex Jones and to Adnan Khashoggi and Genesis Communications and all that stuff. And I've talked about, you know, the connections to him. And listen, uh, two of the biggest uh, sex traffickers in, in the world, maybe the two biggest in the world, going back to the 1980s, was Adnan Khashoggi and the Sultan of Brunei. And you know who's had connections to both of those guys? Trump. And now all this stuff came out with Robert Kraft and all the, the rub and tug shit. And now it's come out that the lady that, you know, the Asian lady was a Trump supporter. She sold access to Trump. She hung, hangs out at Mar-a-Lago. She was watching the Super Bowl when what team? The Patriots won. She's there with the president watching the fucking Super Bowl. That's that's not just a nobody. You don't get in that position being a nobody. And as I showed you in the Secret Right, not Secret Right, the uh, Spellcasters 1.5, which is in the download shop, I showed you in there the connections to all the high-level Scientology people that were at his inauguration that were supporters of the campaign as well. So again, we're supposed to we're just supposed to think this is all coincidence. He just happens to be the, you know connected to high level the, the richest Scientologists in the world are Trump supporters and put money towards his campaign. <coughs> He's for years had connections with the Sultan of Brunei and uh Adnan Khashoggi, both high level human traffickers, and now he has a, just another connection to human traffickers. This, this is what I'm saying. When you watch that, that R. Kelly thing, see, everybody's known for years about the R. Kelly, you know, shooting the videos and all that and piss on you and drip, drip, drip and all that shit. And, but what I didn't know, and I don't, maybe a lot of people didn't know, you don't really see until you watch that documentary, is that this wasn't just like a guy with, listen, the impression is that, that everyone makes you think, and this blew me away. And this is how I know for a fact R. Kelly, the things that he was doing to a certain degree, were, yes, to a certain degree, they were for his own sexual gratification. No one is, I'm not disputing that, I don't think anybody's disputing that. But what isn't getting talked about is that this stuff didn't begin and end with R. Kelly. R. Kelly was doing this stuff, filming all this, I believe, for somebody much larger, because, listen, he wasn't just, this blew me away, he wasn't just filming this stuff with a fucking home video cam. You know, that's, a, that's the impression, that's the thing that everybody thought. This guy had professional movie cameras, he had lighting rigs, he was very concerned that some of the, the women that were abused were talking about how, how concerned he was with the, with the shots and how the, with the shots were being lined up. The line. This guy's acting like fucking Martin Scorsese over here trying just to make a video pissing in some girl's mouth. Or, you know, whatever else he was doing. Pretty sure you can do that with a fucking house lamp, a lamp, uh, you know, or a fucking, you know, and, and, and just, you, you can do that with, you don't need big professional cameras. Listen, it's, there was something in there where, where one of his people said, you know, oh, just, some fake bullshit story, I could tell it was fake, about how he's saying, oh, I just can't stop doing this, I'm addicted to it. Not just addicted to this. I'm addicted to filming it and all this bullshit, man. The, the, listen, he, I, I believe he was doing these sex acts and, and so, because that's the thing. Like, or why was he, the, you know, the question comes up, well, why was he filming all this shit? And the answer is, so he could watch it back later. And it was like, wait a minute, when you listen to what they say about this guy and you look at his work ethic in the studio and, and the road and everything, I mean, basis guy pretty much hasn't slept in the past 30 years would be the only way he could have done all this stuff. I mean, he's abused. He's got 20 or 30 girls locked up somewhere. He's abusing them every day. He's filming all the sex, sex stuff with them. When does this guy have time to bathe or take a shower or eat? And then he's just got bags and bags of tapes for no reason. Oh, just so he can watch them later? Why would you want to watch them later when you can just go grab another bitch out of the fucking... 
dungeon in there and do it to a fresh one. <coughs> it makes no sense. They offer no explanation for that. That's suspect. That's a red flag. <coughs> I think R. Kelly and Michael Jackson, shit, man, I heard stories 15 years ago about how Dyncor and Halliburton and all those guys were running uh, child trafficking rings and that they would, because uh, if you remember back when, remember back when Michael was alive, every time when Bush was in office and stuff, Clinton too. Every time there'd be some shit go popping off, like Serbia or fucking you know Bosnia and Herzegovina or what the fuck it was called, um, or you know some shit popping off, politics stuff with Bush or whatever, then all of a sudden. The next day, there'd be some Michael, new Al, Michael Jackson allegations coming out. And I remember hearing like 10, 15 years ago, maybe longer, 16, 17 years ago, early, early 2000s, that Don Cor, uh had a deal with Michael Jackson where they were basically providing him little boys from their sex trafficking activities in exchange for them having these scandals involving him and little boys pop up every time they needed a quick distraction in the press away from world political events that were going to send society into upheaval. I mean, I, again, is there any way to prove that 100%? No. But I can tell you I heard that incessantly 10, 15 years ago, even way long before he died. There's also the people that think he faked his death. That's possible too. But my point is, is that this, there's a reason why this stuff, people knew about R. Kelly. They knew about him 15, 20 years ago. And who the fuck are these parents? That's what we should really be talking about. Who the fuck are these parents? You know, that... that R. Kelly one was a lot like, it really reminded me of the Scientology uh, Leah Romini show. It really reminded me of that. Instead of asking the hard questions, they focused on showing the alleged victims crying about how terrible it was. But really, we're not really getting any information. Yes, abuse at any level is bad. It's terrible. It damages people. We know that. We get it. But that still doesn't explain a way. I mean, you know, you had these kids, man. Their parents wanted their kids to be in this position. They want, they were, you know, a lot of them were aspiring singers and actresses and performers and shit like that. You know, they wanted their kids to go be 14 and go down and see if they could meet R. Kelly. They want, you know, again, so that to me falls in the category of kelp, careful what you wish for. You just might get it. I mean, Michael Jackson was buying houses for Houses and paying the bills for these kids' parents and, you know. I want, I want your son to come sleep in bed with me for a year. I mean, what the fuck? Okay. You're Michael Jackson. What can go wrong? You just bought us a brand new house. Shut. How come in the ass while you're at it, Doug? Go ahead. Do whatever you want. Shit. You bought me a house. Fucking paid all our bills. Shit. Yeah, you can sleep in the bed with Michael for a month. Who cares? The other big revelation for that Michael thing was that uh, even though he's denied it for all these years and said it didn't happen, even testified and said in court it didn't happen, we now know it's not true. Old Macaulay Culkin, old Home Alone. Mm. Yeah, he got done, son. Macaulay got done. I wanted to believe him. I know a lot of people did. I wanted to believe him when he said it didn't happen. But when you watch that uh, Leaving Neverland, it's quite clear because one of the guys that talks about what was abused. He was the boy, you know, he was, he was only seven years old. It's fucking terrible, but he was bitch boy of the fucking week. And then, and you know, he was the special one. He was the one. And then Macaulay comes on the scene and all of a sudden everything that happened with him and Michael all of a sudden, he's seeing it happen with Macaulay Culkin, like, you know, going in the bedroom, being alone in the bedroom with him for an hour at a time or something with the door locked. 
I mean, remember when they found that kitty porn dungeon in his house? And it was all pictures of little boys and stuff in there, but specifically, he had, they were told like a shrine to Macaulay Culkin, but him at that certain age, like the Home Alone age, sick stuff, man. But, again, you know, all the stuff is terrible. I feel terrible for the victims, of course. Who wouldn't? But, let's be real here. Let's be honest. And there's going to be more of this stuff comes out. I just think it's interesting with all this stuff, the, sel- the selectivity of it. You know, the selectivity of it. Like, why, why? It just doesn't seem, it seems like they're going after certain people. I mean, my God. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin had a 15-year-old girl, got, it got their parents to sign over a fi- the 15-year-old girl to him back in the 70s. Nobody talks about that. Don Henley from the Eagles got caught with not one, but two teenage prostitutes at one time. And one of them OD'd. And he, I don't remember what the sentence was, but he, you know, he basically, nobody talks about that. He got caught two 14-year-old prostitutes and a bunch of heroin. One of them OD'd and maybe died or almost died. Eagles still out there touring. It's interesting. And I think that the reason why some get exposed and some don't has everything to do with their connections to the upper echelons of the real big name power elite who are into this pedophile stuff. That's what I think. And that's what the research has led me to believe. So it's, yeah, it's definitely interesting to see. And uh, the big takeaway again for me is just that there, why now? Why are they doing this now? Why are they, why didn't they do this years ago? And uh, I think the big thing comes down to just like everything. Why did they do 9 11 when they did it not two years before or three years after or whenever? And that answer has always been it, whatever operations that they do, they do them at a time. At a, it, it's, it, and that's why they've turned much control over to computers for the past almost 20 years now. It's because they like to launch these operations at a time where the after effects and the effects of these operations will benefit multiple agendas, not just one. You know, if they're trying to have gun, you know, if they have a gun control agenda, if they have a, you know, tracking and tracing agenda, if they have a going into a certain country to get their oil agenda, if they have a a real estate agenda, whatever it may be, if they can do one of these things and they can cover all those bases or cover a lot more bases at once, then that's how they like to execute stuff. And I think that there's been so much attention now and so many more people looking into these and even um, accepting the idea that left, right, doesn't matter, you've got elite people at the upper echelons and that's, again, that's one of the things, uh, now, now it's been 20 years, it's crazy to believe it, this year is 20 years since Stanley Kubrick's last film, Eyes Wide Shut, came out, and he was, again, so far ahead of his time, because if you really watch Eyes Wide Shut, and you really pay close attention, the real underlying theme of that, so people always get caught up, and they think in the, you know, they oh, it's Illuminati ritual thing, well, the real underlying theme of that movie is sex traffic. If you really pay close attention to that movie, that's really the whole underlying theme of that movie. And that's why you see, what was that uh, chick's name? Lily Sobieski. Remember that the costume shop and the Japanese businessmen and all that, you know, and then at the end, they, (coughs) even though they don't say it, you, at the very end of the movie, you see Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise giving up their daughter to the uh, sex traffickers at the very end of the movie There's you know, when they're in the toy store.
that he, you know, he knew about it and he saw that stuff even back then. And now more people are figuring it out. More clues have come out and uh, they've needed to, you know, burn some other people to make people think that a lot of this stuff just ended with R. Kelly or Michael Jackson. You see them do this in all kinds of all kinds of different things. I think it's also what's happening now with this uh, uh, this you know this whole scandal that's going on with the the college tuition scandal and all that. And listen, that stuff's been going on uh, from time immemorial. And you know, a couple of fucking sh- shitty B actresses getting busted for doing it is not going to make it stop. But it's bringing it out to the public eye in a way which is actually going to be able to make it continue. That's why they do this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, some chick that was on fucking the Full House show and then Felicity Huffman, what was she on, 30-something? or something? I don't know. Anyway, point of the matter is There's a reason why that's happening and coming out now, and it's not coincidence. And it's not going to mean that that stuff is not going to continue. Of course it's going to continue. Everything in life is pay to play. And I thought it had just become that way over the past 10 years or so ago, or or so, but no, it's always been that way. That's the one thing it took me a long time to learn when I was, you know, playing music and being in bands and stuff. How far you go with, with your music, just in with anything, same thing with my work, you know, you could, everything's pay to play. If you got the money to, to pay, you can get your music to anybody. And this is not just an assumption. I've seen this and talked to bands and artists that have experienced this and everything else. You can get, if you want to get on one of these, if you got the money, your band can go, it doesn't even, you could be the crappiest band on earth, but if you had an unlimited cash supply, you could get yourself on radio, on TV, on uh, the opening act for a major touring act, you get yourself on a bunch of major festivals, all it takes is money. 30, 40, 50,000 a pop. You wouldn't even believe how many of the, you know that a lot of when you go see major touring acts like at an arena, did you know that the majority of those touring acts paid to be the opening band on that tour? That's how it works now. It's not about who's the best band or who's the most talented or anything. No, it's about who has the most cash behind them and that's it. And it's that way in music. It's that way in movies. You think I couldn't get my movies on Netflix and iTunes and all that? Oh, I could, but you got to have money to pay somebody to do it because it's pay to play because they have rules where you have to have had so many previous videos or films on iTunes in order to get your iTunes movie there. So if you don't have any, because they won't let you come in unless it's like, okay, you won't let me put my movie on iTunes unless I had like four or five previous movies on there. Yet you won't even let me get one on there because I don't have four or five. So how do you do that? Well, you have to go to an aggregator. You have to go to somebody who's already gotten movies on there a bunch of times. And then you pay them $2,500 or $3,000 or whatever. And they put your movie on Netflix and they put it up on iTunes. And then, you know, that makes your competition just think that you've got your shit together more than they do. And you probably really don't. You just have access to more cash than that person does. And it's the same thing happening with everything's pay to play. Everything. You want to get your movie out there, it's pay to play. That's just how it is. Want to get your kid in a big school, you got a bunch bunch of extra money, we can get your kid in school. Doesn't matter if they're not an athlete, we can get them in on an athletic scholarship by saying they are an athlete and we'll use somebody else's fucking identity to do it. We can do it. You got the money, you got 500K, we can do it. No problem. Your kid doesn't even want to go to college, so what? We'll get him an Ivy League school. They can party. We'll fucking boss the test results for them, too. Don't, don't even worry about it. Pay to play. 
pay to play. Everything in the world is pay to play, and nothing is based on, it's not a meritocracy. You know, it, uh, everybody thinks it's that. It's not you work hard and you do the best work, and that's who gets put out there. That's the illusion. That's the illusion they put out to make you think that anybody who's not at that level must not be worth a crap or must be not any good. Otherwise, they'd be at that level too. No, it's all about fucking money. And again, that's exactly why everything they do is to try and keep my operation from having the funds to operate and to be able to do these things. Because if I had an unlimited wealth, somebody won the fucking lottery tomorrow, I had play. just one of y'all out there needs to win the lottery, by the way. I had like 20 people. If I ever win the lottery, you're going to be funded for life. Well, you need to start buying some tickets in, motherfucker. God damn, get on that shit. <laughs> win it. But seriously, you know, if I had an unlimited, think about that. As it is now, when I put out a movie, I barely even have enough money, just like now with the spellcaster stuff, to even finish the movies and make them. Forget about having a fucking budget to be able to promote them or get them up on iTunes and streaming services, stuff like that. Oh, that's non existent. That will end up costing more than the whole fucking film cost to make. You see what I'm saying? And But that, again, that's the only thing that that is what holds back not only me or anybody else. That's the only thing holding back your kid from going to an Ivy League school and and having that you know degree and not having to work. I mean, at the same time, though, a fucking, listen, a college degree ain't a fucking lottery ticket. A lot of people have to think a college degree is a fucking lottery ticket. It ain't a fucking winning lottery ticket. There are a lot of people out there with fucking PhDs that are flipping burgers and digging ditches and working at fucking Subway. There are. Believe me. I've, you know, I've, I've known adults. I know adults. You know? Didn't go to college, or, you know, right after high school. Then decided to go back to college later in life because they had basically no, no, you know, no other options. And, but don't realize that if you don't have experience in what you're trying to get a degree for, it makes fuck all zero difference. Experience is what, is what counts. Experience is what everybody's looking for. And that's what pe the mistake people make is they go to school to get these degrees. But while they're doing that, they aren't trying to get experience in the field because, you know, they're trying to keep a roof over their head. They're trying to, you know, put kids through school, whatever. And then they, you know, they get they get their degree, they get out of school, and they realize that every job that they want to apply for for the degree they just got wants two to three years experience for the position. And then what are they left with? They're left with a fucking eight-year degree that's, that is basically worthless. And they're just back, they have to go right back to doing what they were doing before they uh, got a degree. I mean, I've seen it happen 100,000 times. I've known so many people it's happened to. But, hey, you got the money to pay to play. You can, well, you can put all that shit aside, can't you? Then you can get that piece of paper and, hey, we had, you know, we're paying for it. Everything's pay to play. That's the thing. And if you don't know that and you haven't figured that out, you are... You're naive living in a dream world. If you're living in a fancy world, you just don't even know the way the real world works. It is not a meritocracy. You do not get to the top or don't get anywhere anymore by strictly based on, if it was strictly based on hard work and dedication, I would be a multimillionaire because I've dedicated a countless hours every minute of my life to this stuff for decades. But if you don't have financial backing for that, it means nothing. You can never get anywhere. But that doesn't mean that what you're doing isn't worthwhile. It's just that the system that we exist in is gatekept by how many dollars you, you have. You know, if you got a lot of money, you can get right to the front of the line. No, no, you know, no weights. What else? I never talked about this. 
This is hilarious. Everybody's like, ah, you know, because I talked about Jose Canseco and his wackiness before, but I just forgot to talk about this, and people were sending me messages. I didn't talk about this. Why didn't you talk about this? You need to talk about this. I'm like, all right. So apparently now, we talked about the Jose Canseco stuff previously with his uh, talking about time travel and all that. Apparently now, you can hunt Bigfoot and aliens with Jose Canseco for $5,000 in cash. Having been recently spurned in his offer to be President Trump's new chief of staff, the former A's outfielder has a new adventure planned, hunting for Bigfoots and aliens. And you can travel with Canseco for a mere $5,000 in cash. Go on a Bigfoot and alien excursion with Jose Canseco. Contact Morgan Management. When the Huffington Post called the listed number, it received a text reply that read, only five lucky individuals will get a golden ticket. Oompa Loompas ain't got nothing on Bigfoot. Traveling his custom RV, you'll never know what's going to happen with Mr. Canseco. No, you certainly don't. Last month, Canseco tweeted that aliens had given him the secret to time travel. Uh, yeah. Um, anybody out there got five grand I can borrow? Dude, can you imagine? Could you think of that? Oh, dude. I, I'm serious. Anybody got five grand I can borrow? We need, we need to get five grand. Let me go hunt aliens of Bigfoot with Canseco and film the whole fucking thing and put it out as a movie. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Dude, I'm telling you, that'd be some shit. That would be some shit. Can you imagine? I'd have that motherfucker thinking he got abducted by fucking Santa Claus before the fucking night was over. God damn! You think he's unhinged now? You get me out there hunting Bigfoot with him in an RV, I'll pump that motherfucker full of so much fucking, so many stories and info, he won't know what the fuck to do. Think about that. Think about that. Now that would be on Netflix, I guarantee you. Netflix would be chomping a bit to get their hands on that motherfucker. Josh Reeves hunts aliens and Bigfoots with Jose Canseco. Let's do this. I'm down. I'm down. I'll do it. I'll, somebody got to come up with the cash, make it happen. I'm down. Somebody get me one of them golden tickets. Let me go in there. I, I think if anybody should do it, I think it should be me. I was a fucking grew up. My, when I was a kid, man, when I was a teenager, my two favorite baseball teams were the Texas Rangers, of course, and the Oakland A's. And I was a huge fucking Conseco fan. And when he came to fucking Dallas, came to Texas Rangers, man, I was fucking there at the very first game yelling his name. I told you that story. I'm telling you. I'm taking some fucking Conseco rookie cards to get that motherfucker to sign, though, too. You want me to sign, get the one signed for you? Let me know, but seriously. If anybody needs to go hunting aliens and Bigfoot with Conseco, it's me. We'll take that motherfucker up to fucking Mount Shasta. He won't ever come back. <laughs> that would be some shit. I'm down. I think it could be one of the greatest movies ever made. Josh Reeves and, and goes UFO and Bigfoot hunting with Jose Canseco. Holy fucking shit. That would be some fucking shit right there, I tell you what. God damn. <clears throat> All right. I got a lot more news and I got a lot more stories and stuff like that to cover, but... Uh, I've been on here about an hour and 15 minutes, and honestly, I need to get back to work. I'm glad I was able to get back on air finally. I'm glad to be back with you guys. I want to thank everybody out there for continued listening, your continued support and patience. And, uh, you know, those of you who uh, believe in what I'm doing here and support what I'm doing here, I just can't thank you enough. I want to continue thank you, tell you, tell you how grateful I truly am. And uh, cannot wait for you to see what I've done with these films and just continue to please support my work, spread the word and uh, get yourself some downloads, get a membership to the archives and uh, help us reach our weekly goal of 200 bucks by tomorrow. I will be back for sure tomorrow with another show, but I got to get back to work on the film right now so I can stay on track. I love you guys. We'll see you soon. Take care.